What's up folks, how's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're going to be comparing the Nintendo Switch Lite versus the new 2DS XL. Now the new 2DS XL essentially replaces the 3DS XL that was available for several years. And eventually the Switch Lite probably wants to take over the space of the DS. But right now uh, the new 2DS XL and indeed the 2DS is still a product that Nintendo is manufacturing for the time being and still kind of a competitor and certainly a fan family of gaming consoles available from Nintendo. Now, from a price perspective, you're looking at about $199 for the Switch Lite versus the new 2DS XL typically could be had with Mario Kart for around $129 to about $150 depending upon where you get it. And uh, the uh, standard 2DS is around $80. And certainly in terms of the compact form factor with the clamshell design, the new 2DS XL is uh, more compact than even the Switch Lite. It's also slightly lighter weighing around 260 grams versus uh, the switch light is around 276 grams but not a huge margin there now from a hardware perspective you are getting quite a lot more with the switch light it's basically the same exact internals as the full-size nintendo switch console but in a scaled down form factor it doesn't have an hdmi output which would have been a really great feature but the switch light has a much superior higher resolution display that measures around 5.5 inches has a native resolution of 1280 by 720 and that's quite a lot better than the 400 by 240 upper screen that we have on the new 2ds xl granted it is a larger screen than what we had with the original uh, 3ds xl about 4.88 inches in terms of diagonal size the lower touch screen optimized for the uh, stylus is fairly rudimentary in terms of its resolution only measuring about 320 pixels by 240 pixels and it's about 4.18 inches in terms of size. Now, the Switch Lite uses the exact same custom configured NVIDIA Tegra processor inside, so the graphical performance is going to be up there with what you're going to expect to see on the full size Switch, which is going to blow the ARM 11 processor that we have on uh, the new 2DS XL. Granted, the new 2DS XL for a DS is uh, definitely better than the previous generation, but uh, pales in terms of technical and graphical comparison towards what we have on the Switch Lite. Now, in terms of the control interface, the Switch Lite is pretty much identical uh, to the full-size Switch with the Joy-Cons inserted into the display. So you have dual analog thumbsticks. You might have uh, the same inherent issues that were present in the original Switch in terms of reliabilities, sticky uh, buttons, and issues with the thumbsticks long term. I haven't experienced that thus far, but I've had uh, seen complaints online of people complaining that uh, they've had issues with the thumbsticks and uh, more reliability concerns with the hardware itself. But since the Switch has essentially the same controls that you would find on a gamepad designed for a full-fledged gaming console, it does open up to a bigger scale of games and possibilities so you can play first-person shooter games, racing games, and things like that. Now, the new 2DS XL, in terms of button has a decent variety you have a circle pad on the left hand side a little numby thing that they call the c-stick on the right hand side as well as an awesome directional pad a b x y buttons as well as uh, four sets of triggers located on the back and not to mention you have that full touch screen uh, interface it's really optimized for puzzle games strategy games brawling type games as well as your classic nintendo platformer games now you can certainly play more complex full-fledged console style games in here and certainly there's been a number of ports over the years but due to the fact that you don't have dual analog thumbsticks and the overall shape of the console is not really ergonomically friendly uh, for long-term use especially for more precise controls and at the end of the day it's really optimized for the more vintage style nintendo gaming library obviously pokemon is very very popular onto here as well as the classic nintendo platformers now, one thing that is advantage on the new 2DS XL is durability. The fact that it has that clamshell design means that you can uh, make it a lot more durable and certainly the screens and all the controls will be protected when uh, the console is not in use. That's not the same thing as the exposed uh, control interface that we have on uh, the uh, Nintendo Switch Lite. So in terms of being toddler or young kid friendly, from a durability standpoint, I think uh, the new 2DS XL definitely has that over the Switch Lite. Now in terms of some of the other differences, we still have a camera located on the hinge 
on uh, the uh, new 2DS XL, we don't have any cameras on the Switch Lite. Both use a micro SD expansion for user upgradable memory, which is awesome. There is a difference in terms of the Wi Fi. We have G standard on uh, the uh, DS versus uh, the Switch Lite uses the faster AC protocol as well as Bluetooth. Both have NFC capability, both have uh, speakers and a headphone jack, although the stereo speakers on the Switch Lite do sound a little bit better than what we can on the new 2DS. And when it comes to uh, talk about battery, uh, we basically have a much larger battery capacity on the Switch Lite. It is a lot more power hungry, relatively speaking, 35, 70 milliamp hours versus 1300 milliamp hours on the new 2DS XL. They're uh, rated similar in terms of battery life up to seven hours, according to Nintendo. But based on our uh, given experience, we got a uh, runtime about three hours and 23 minutes on a given session on the Switch. And on the 2DS XL, we played Mario Kart 7 and got a total runtime about 5 hours and 8 minutes. Granted, these are completely different gaming titles that require different resources out of the internal processing, but on average, you're probably more than likely going to experience a couple of more hours of battery life on the new 2DS XL relative uh, to the Switch due to the fact that the games are a lot less resource intensive. Now, lastly, when it comes to the games library, the Switch Lite can essentially play all of the existing Switch library, which is over over 2,800 games. And uh, the same thing goes with the new 2DS XL. It can play pretty much most of the games designed for the 3DS, uh, minus the 3D component, which was useless and kind of a gimmick to begin with. And that's over 1,200 uh, gaming titles or so. And in both regards, that's a pretty extensive library of uh, some decent title games out there from both Nintendo and third-party indie developers and things like that. Now, importantly, the Switch library is certainly going to only expand from here on out because there are more high profile developers making content for that specific platform because it's still an active competitor in the high profile gaming console war if you want to call it that and uh, Nintendo probably doesn't want to put too many resources on uh, to the DS 2DS, 3DS library of games, although they'll probably come out with new titles uh, just to keep the platform going, but you're not going to see as much attention and as much resource and money thrown into that space compared to what you're going to find with the Switch and the Switch Lite, respectively. So in terms of uh, going forward, I definitely think that uh, the 2DS XL is still an awesome portable gaming platform, st still one of the best solutions out there, especially for younger audiences and gamers getting first exposed uh, to the whole gaming space. I definitely think uh, that a, a 2DS XL is a better gift than a smartphone for somebody that's under the age of five or six uh, first getting into gaming and things like that. Uh, definitely uh, will pick physical controls over touchscreen interfaces. Uh, but the Switch Lite is pretty much king of the hill when it comes uh, to the portable gaming console experience. There's no real active competitors right now. Sony is pretty much out of the game. Microsoft is not going to compete in this specific space and mobile gaming in the smartphone world hasn't really matured enough and uh, the uh, third party game pads are never going to really give you the same experience as you're going to find in the Switch Lite for the time being. Now we're going to have a video coming up talking about uh, specifically what are your portable gaming options out there so definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel for that video we're currently working on right now but I want to give you guys a huge shout out out and thank you so much for watching if you have any specific questions let me know check out the links in the description for more details and we'll see you real soon take care